protect the children. As the sun dipped below the hill behind Charles Bridge in the picturesque city of Prague, two American couples, John and Sarah, and David and Jennifer, were shown their tables at a cozy restaurant on the east bank of the Voltava. They had planned this dinner months in advance as part of their trip to visit their sons, Alex and James, who were spending their junior year in college abroad. It would be a couple more days before the couples would return to their quiet New Hampshire hamlet, and this was the relaxing dinner they were looking forward to after days of contending with the over-tourism that is Prague. The evening, however, was far from the peaceful respite they had hoped for. The couple's mood was tense, and their conversation was peppered with hushed tones and nervous glances. They had a grave matter to discuss, their teenage sons, Alex and James, who had committed a serious crime while on a student exchange program in the city. Their crime was captured on camera. The boys, in a drunken state, attempted to steal alcohol from a corner store. When the shop owner confronted them, the boys became belligerent and started to engage. During a brief brawl, the boys aggressively pushed the shop owner against the cash register, his head hitting the corner. He immediately dropped to the ground, unconscious. The boys, leaving the bottles of alcohol behind, quickly fled the scene and remained unidentified by the police. The incident quickly made the local news. The captured footage was everywhere and unavoidable. The shop owner was in the ICU, barely hanging on. The boys' identities weren't clear to anyone, except their parents and perhaps the shop owner. The authorities were hoping and waiting for him to wake up from his coma. Now, the gravity of the situation had finally dawned on the couples, and they knew they had to act fast if they wanted to prevent their sons from facing justice in a foreign land. John was the first to speak. We need to act fast. We can't let our boys be arrested and sent to prison in a foreign country. Sarah nodded her head in agreement. But what can we do? The video is pretty clear. We need to find a way to get them out of this mess. David interjected. We can't rely on the legal system here. We need to take matters into our own hands. Jennifer looked at him with a mix of fear and determination. What do you mean? What can we do? David's eyes narrowed. We can't let the shop owner identify Alex and James. John raised his eyebrows. There's nothing we can do to prevent him from identifying them. David scoffed. There is. We'll just have to make sure he doesn't wake up. Oh my God, what are you suggesting, David? Jennifer nervously replied. Look, what do you think will happen to our sons if they get arrested and possibly charged with murder? We can't sit back and let them face the consequences of a stupid mistake. They're kids. They were drunk. They're our children, David retorted. The conversation had taken a dark turn, and the couples were now discussing the logistics to carry out the unthinkable. They were willing to break the law to protect their children, and they knew they had to act fast. The next morning, David and John set out to locate the hospital where the shop owner was admitted. They learned that his name was Pavel Novak, and he was at Hospital Na Frantishku. And so, the four of them made their way to Hospital Na Frantishku later that evening. On the ground floor, in a quiet corner of the building, was the ICU unit. Sarah distracted the lone nurse at the front desk, engaging her in English conversation, which the nurse had a hard time understanding. Meanwhile, Jennifer's eyes scanned the nearby charts and discovered Pavel in room 9. The wives quickly slithered away, returning to their husbands, giving them the location of Pavel. David and John exchanged a nervous glance, but their determination did not waver. They needed to get inside Pavel's room. David's eyes darted around the hospital exterior, and he spotted a window on the side of the building that was slightly ajar. Without a word, he sprinted towards the window, followed closely by John. 
Once inside, they found themselves in an empty hospital room. It was ICU room eight. Pavel was just next door. David peered into the hallway and it was empty. They quickly darted into room nine where it was dimly lit and there laid Pavel Novak. Jennifer and Sarah went back to the hotel. They sat on the edge of the sofa, their hands tightly clasped together as they nervously awaited their husband's return. The once spacious suite now felt suffocatingly small and their hearts pounded with fear and anxiety. Every passing moment felt like an eternity as they imagined the worst case scenario. Their minds were flooded with horrific images of their husbands being caught. After an hour, the door flew open. David and John emerged with looks of satisfaction. Done, David reported. Let's not talk about it, honey, John whispered as he hugged his wife. The couples were well aware that they were not only obstructing justice for the benefit of their children, but had committed an even more heinous crime of their own. Murder. The weight of that knowledge pressed down on them like a leaden blanket, but they couldn't bear the thought of their children suffering. But at what cost? Plagued by what now and what if, the couple's momentary satisfaction of the completed act turned to uncertainty that was almost too much to bear, and their hands trembled with anxiety. Get the kids, we're all leaving tomorrow, David ordered. They all sat there motionless. Get the kids, damn it, David nearly yelling now. The remainder of the night they packed their bags and left Prague the very next morning, not daring to look back. Back in New Hampshire, it was weeks before they heard any additional news about the incident, their sons and Pavel Novak. The police had insufficient evidence to go on, and no witness at this point, and so the search for the unidentified boys terminated. One morning, while mulling over the New York Times, a warm breeze blew in through the kitchen window, giving Jennifer a sense of calm she hadn't felt since Prague. And then she saw the story about Pavel Novak. Unsolved ICU murder leaves Prague in shock, wife and three kids grieving. That's it. Thanks for watching and listening, everyone. And remember, to enjoy the journey. See you next time. Bye-bye.